realize how long it's actually been since I last filmed a makeup tutorial on my channel. I literally just thought I'm going to jump on my YouTube and check when my last video was. Had a look and it was 10 months ago. Uh, my makeup routine has changed so much so I thought I'm going to finally sit down. Mason's at his dad so I'm free to do whatever I want around the house and not feel like really bad for it. Uh, so I thought I'm going to do an updated makeup routine. A lot of products have changed, the way I apply things have changed, so you know it's going to be good, it's going to be different from what you've ever seen on my channel before. Before I start doing any of my makeup, I always like to make sure that my skin is looking amazing and really hydrated first. Biggest difference in my skin for about four months now, I've been drinking three liters of water every day. Before that, I would struggle to drink like one glass of water, maybe two glasses max. Biggest difference in my skin. I have no dry patches on my skin at all now. My skin is looking so much better than it did before. Now, I do have a new favorite moisturizer as well. So this is the Sunday Riley Vitamin C Rich Hydration Cream. I absolutely love the smell of this. It feels insane on my skin. It's nice and thick and it makes me look really, really glowy. Um, I just love it. I apply it every morning and every night, but I always apply it before applying my foundation. So it does come with like a little spatula. This is pretty much all I use. I don't have a massive skincare routine. It's literally just drinking water, applying this, and now and then I do like an exfoliate. I am on the hunt for like a nice face oil though. So if anyone has any recommendations, let me know. I'm just gonna pop my little spatula in here. I give this spatula a really good clean after every use as well. So I'm gonna pop some on my face like so. So when I apply my moisturizer, I always let it soak into my skin for a good five minutes. That way my foundation's gonna apply a lot nicer and this has had a chance to kind of like sink into the skin. See how like glowy and pretty that leaves my skin looking. So lately I've been using two different brow products. Today I'm gonna to go in with my good old dip brow. I'm just gonna use the shade Blonde. Um, I have also been using the Anastasia Brow Wiz, like the pencil lately, if I wanna go a little bit more natural, but today I feel like I wanna be a bit more glam. All right, so just zoomed you in a little bit closer. I'm just gonna start by brushing my brow hairs up. So I'm gonna go in with the Anastasia Dip Brow in the shade Blonde. Uh, this one is starting to dry out because I don't use it all the time. All right, I'm just going to pop a little bit of Inglot Duraline into my dip brow because it has started to dry up a little bit. One of my new things that I do when I'm using the dip brow is I'm going to scoop a little bit of that product out and then on the back of my hand, I kind of brush it down. And I'm trying to make the brush really flat, so I'm doing it on both sides. I don't know if you can really see what I'm doing. Um, and then I just want to have a really small amount of product left on the brush. So I don't start it from the, the very start of my brow either. I'm going to start it from about quarter of the way along. And I keep just going back into that product that's on my hand. All right, so once I've sort of got that line, I put the brush on the line and just start to drag up just to kind of blend that product through a little bit. Now I'm gonna start drawing the tail part of the brow. So then I'm just gonna go in and do a line above the brow. And just begin to fill that in a little bit. And then when I've got less product on the brush, I'm going to slowly drag that across to the start of my brow and then start dragging upwards again. So I'm just going to have a really close look and just make sure that's how I want it to look. I can see a little bit in this area that I need to fill in a little bit more. So I'm going to go in and do that. So now I'm gonna go in with a little bit of my P. Louise base and I just wanna make sure that underneath my brow is nice and straight. So it doesn't matter if the product is not looking perfect here because we are going to fix that right now. All right, so I'm just going in with my MAC brush. This is a MAC 252S. Um, this is what I use on my clients to cut a cut crease and it just gives you like a really, really nice precise line. So I'm gonna go in and carve out underneath So once I've done that, I'm just kind of going to press that all over my lid. OK, 
Okay, so now what I like to do is just blend out the edges of that base just to make sure there's not gonna be any solid lines. So I've never really been a massive fan of using primers, but I got invited to a Giorgio Armani beauty event um, a couple of months ago. They gave me this, it is insane. Perfect for you dry skin girls. Gives you a glow, makes your skin feel really, really smooth, but it's not too thick and it does soak into the skin really, really nicely. So this is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Hydrating Primer. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit of that. I've almost run out. This is so sad. I'm gonna have to repurchase this for sure. I actually use this quite often on days when I don't wear makeup. I just kind of apply it how I have today um, and I leave it on and it just gives me like a really nice glow and my skin feels insane. Like, oh my gosh, it's like the smoothest feeling primer. It feels so good. Just while I let that hydrating primer sink into my skin, I just thought I'd show you the tan that I've been using. So I haven't been actually fake tanning because I've had nowhere to go. Isolation quarantine feels. Uh, so what I've been using is this Loving Tan Deluxe Gradual Tan in Dark. I use it just like a moisturizer. It's pretty much what it is. It smells insane. I've only been applying it to my arms, my chest, and my legs because nothing else is really showing anyway. So I do look a little bit tanned, but it is just thanks to this product. So I've used it... I used it this morning, yesterday morning, and the morning before. So this is like from three days of using it. Um, the next couple of days I'll just moisturize and then I can apply some more when I feel like I need it. It's nice to just have like a little bit of a tan when I'm stuck at home because I feel a little bit more put together. All right, so I've let that primer soak into my skin a little bit more. So now I'm gonna go in with my Vanity Mineral Powder Foundation. This one's in the shade Armandine. This is the only brush I can use with it. I've tried so many other brushes and they just don't give me the coverage. If you follow me on Instagram, you're probably so sick of me talking about this, but honestly, it is that good. So I just dip my brush in and then I tap off any excess powder. Now, because I do have drier skin, I like to apply this in tapping motions as opposed to rubbing it on because that can just lift up the dead skin. If you have oily skin, you can probably apply it however you like. Um, so I'm just gonna do little tapping motions. Honestly, I'm so obsessed with this product. I don't like feeling really, really cakey, but I still like to feel like I'm quite full coverage and glam. And this is insane. It lasts so, so, so well on my skin. It doesn't look really, really matte either. It's got a little bit of a glow to it, um, but it probably does help that I apply so many glowy products underneath. I don't go all the way up to underneath my eye because I am going to be applying concealer in that section and I don't want it to be like too cakey in that area. All right, so have a look at the coverage on this side as opposed to this side. Isn't that insane for a powder? So it's a mineral powder foundation. Um, I've spoken about this before, but whenever I hear the words mineral, I'm like, nah, not for me. I like full coverage. This is insane. It's so freaking good. I can't even explain to you. Um, yeah, feels super light on the skin. It's great for hot days, especially if you're in Australia, but it also washes off nice and easily at the end of the day, but it does last perfectly all day too. So this one being the shade Armandine, I find it really, really good because I can make it work if I have a tan and I can also make it work if I don't, just depending on like the concealer and how I bronze my face afterwards. Next, I'm just going to apply a little bit of concealer. So I'm going to go in with this Dermacol one. I don't know what color it's in, but um, yeah, I'm going to go with that. I'm just going to also apply that on that same MAC brush that I was using before. Really, really small amount because a little bit of this goes a long way. Uh, going to start applying underneath my eye in sort of like a triangle shape. Now, what I've learned to do with my concealer, thanks to AAF Beauty, is I pop the concealer on and I like to make it look really, really thick in that center part of it. Um, obviously not too thick because it can look a little bit too cakey underneath your eyes. Um, I noticed this mark on my face yesterday and it kind of looks almost like a wart under my eye. But I was Googling it and it can be like a form of skin cancer. So last night I was having like a massive panic attack. Um, so I'm going to book in and just get it checked out like just to make sure. But it's been there for like years. All right, I'm going to apply a little bit. Oh, so I just got my lip. <laughs> apply a little bit on my chin there and here. Now I feel like if I let my concealer sit there a little bit before I actually blend it fully out, that it gives me a lot more coverage. So all I do now is just blend out the edges of that using just a little sponge, just because I don't want any harsh lines when it does start to dry. But I leave the center of that, which is where I want the majority of the coverage.
um, down the center of your face doesn't matter as much because you do kind of apply less in that area um, but yeah so just blending that out now this beauty blender is not wet like it has been wet but I didn't wet it today I'm just gonna fix that creasing I've got on my eyes okay so under my eyes isn't actually completely blended I've just blended out those edges and I will go back in in just a moment and fix that up. So what I like to do a lot of the time as well is do like a little bit of a cream contour because I feel like it looks a lot more natural rather than just having a whole bunch of powder sitting on the top of my skin. Um, so I kind of like sometimes I do this and then sometimes I'll just use a powder. This is the Too Faced Sculpt and Conceal in the shade Mocha. So I'm just going to add a little tiny bit here. Here. And then some in the top corners of my forehead. Whoops. Really importantly with up here, you don't want to put it right close to your hairline because then you've got nowhere to blend it. So it's always good to put it down a little bit further. I'll also apply a small amount of that down the sides of my nose, under here and under my lip. All right, so then I'm just going to take my beauty blender. I just want to make sure I keep blending that right in this area. I don't want to take it up. I don't want to take it down. I really want it to stay in this sort of an area. This is just a Thin Lizzy beauty blender and I'm just taking the little round side. So I'm just going to start by tapping that and just really keeping that in that same spot because I don't want it to move around too much. So a lot of people do apply a lot more product here but I have quite a small, a small face and small features and it just ends up looking too much if I apply too much in that area. This beauty blender probably is a little bit dry. I didn't go and wet it. Just using like the side of the beauty blender to do my nose. Pretty happy with how that's looking. Now what I'm going to do is go back in and blend out those concealer areas, which will kind of like, see I've sort of got a couple of harsh lines around here, some around here. So now when I go back in and blend out that concealer, it's going to kind of mesh those colors together so they blend a little bit better. I know a lot of you girls probably don't like doing the fully contoured forehead look. Um, I just like the way that it looks on me, so I do it. Um, but you obviously don't have to apply as much as I have. So now I'm just going to blend out underneath my eye just a little bit. And that will make it blend in nicely with the contour that we just did. And then down the center of my nose. I'm going to go in with a bit of Australia's Fresh and Flawless Press Powder. So I'm going to take that on my beauty blender, then I kind of like push it on my wrist to make sure it's really evenly spread on the beauty blender. Um, just tried to use that as a mirror, but it's got nothing in it. Mm. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to just like gently pat that under my eye. So pretty much under my eye is the only place I really set my face because I do like to have a bit more of a dewy, alive look. Um, if you do get really, really oily skin, obviously set those areas where you get oily. So whatever is remaining, I'm just going to kind of do like that center area of my face. So now I'm going to go in and do a little bit of extra contouring or bronzing. So this one is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in the shade Dark Deep. This one is good for pretty much when I have a tan on or if I'm a little bit darker. Otherwise, I would use Give Me Sun or Hula by Benefit. So I'm going to just like tap my little brush in. This is the Morphe M405 brush. And I don't like to rub that on because I feel like it's just going to move the product that I've got underneath that. So I'm just going to kind of do like little tapping motions starting up here because that's where I want the majority of the product. And then I just like bring it down just to blend that a little bit. And I'll just do a little touch of that down the sides of my nose. And then I also do a little bit, so I'm not actually adding any more to the brush. And when you do contour your jawline, you don't want to be going like this because then you're going to end up contouring in the wrong spot. Keep your head straight how you're going to look like normally and then just go in. So I have a little towel in front of me and when I use the same brush over and over again, I kind of just like dust it on the towel to get rid of any excess product. So usually I'm not much of a blush person, have been lately. This is MAC Melba. I do want to find a more orangey based blush, but this one's really, really pretty as well. So I always apply a little bit extra blush because I find that it's kind of the first thing to go away. So I pretty much got to finish all of my base makeup before going in to do my eyes. Ah! Just dropped some makeup. 
just trying to get that three liters of water in. So now for highlighting options, um, if you want to have something a little bit more subtle that just looks like you've got really, really pretty glowy skin, go for something like this, the Hourglass Ambient Luminous Light. Super pretty. Mine's almost empty. I need to get a new one. But I don't want to look subtle and naturally highlighted today. So I'm going to go in with my Becca Champagne Pop. I did drop this the other day, so it's a bit broken. So it's really important how you hold your face. Like if you can see straight on, if I'm to apply it like that, I can't really see where the natural glowy part of my face is so I sort of turn on because I have a light in that direction I'm gonna turn my face so that part is facing directly to the light and then you can almost see naturally where that should go so I apply a little bit to the tip of my nose above my lip I say a little bit I apply a lot um, also just a little bit in these sections here so once again, turning my face towards the light. By the way, yesterday I had really, really bad isolation nails. I'll show you a photo on the screen. So I did some just stick on nails and I got some nail polish and I made them look a little bit more nice because my nails are naturally so disgusting. Um, but I do have some nicer, more glam coffin longer shaped ones coming from Amazon. So if anyone wants to see like a at home, do your nails from home tutorial demo when they arrive, let me know because I'm super excited to play around and I want to make them like really, really glam. So I just got these ones for the moment from Chemist Warehouse. Now it's time to go in and do the eyes. I'm going to use my absolute favorite palette. I swear you can do so many looks with this palette. It's insane. And whenever I travel, this is the only palette I take with me. It's so, so, so good. This is Be Perfect Cosmetics collaboration with Makeup With Jar. So pretty. I'm going to go for like the most boring neutral shades today. But um, another day I want to do like something green or just something different. Uh, what I'm going to do first is highlight my brow bone. So I'm going to go in with this shade here called Glow Up. I'm just going to apply that just under my brow bone. I like to do the brow bone first because I feel like it's nicer to blend products over the top. It makes it look more seamless as opposed to having this solid line of just like highlight put on at the end so i find with my eye shape it's better to do like a nice color through the crease darken it up in the outer corner and keep it light in the inner corner because it makes my eyes look bigger because i don't have naturally big eyes i wasn't quite blessed in that department but i still make it work all right just want to make sure that's blended because it has been sitting there for a little while and i have got a little bit of creasing I'm gonna go in with the shade sandy so i'm gonna tap the brush in this brush is a must-have for any beginners or if you're just like not sure what brushes to go through because I know it can be really, really daunting knowing what's good for what. This is the Morphe M441, really, really good for going through the crease. Um, this one's good for like packing on the color in the outer corner or going through the crease or like underneath the eye. So this is the Morphe M456. These are pretty much the only two brushes I'll be using for my eyes today. So I'm going to go in with the shade Sandy and I kind of like tip my head back and just start blending that through the crease. I kind of like add a small amount of product, blend that through, and then add a little bit more as I go. So I just kind of like doing little windscreen wiper motions back and forth. All right, so now I'm gonna still use the same brush and go in with the shade Dirty Tan. Tap any excess off. So this one, I'm still going to kind of blend through the crease, but I'm not going to take it all the way to the inner corner. This brush, honestly, so good. It just blends so perfectly. Okay, then I'm going to take the same brush. I'm going to do Dirty Tan and Sandy and apply them underneath my eye. Um, I'm going to go in with the shades Brownie and Too Much. I'm kind of going to mix those together. And just pat that on the outer corner using the other brush, which is the Morphe M456. So I'm going to just, just pat that on the outer corner. You can add a little bit of shimmer if you want. I don't feel like adding shimmer. I feel like my face is glowy enough today. I'm going to go in with the shade Asher, which is this one here, just on the same brush. And I'm going to just pop that kind of on like the inner corner part to about the center of my lid. So I just do little tapping motions and then I'll go back in with the first blending brush and just blend over all of that to make sure it's seamless. I'm going to go in with a little bit more of too much just to blend that outer corner and then dusting off that other more precise brush. I'm going to go in with a bit of too much again and do that on the outer corner here. 
And then going back in with the blending brush and going underneath all that, I'm just going to take a little bit of dirty tan just to help blend that out. Just going to quickly do the other eye. Next, I'm just going to go in and use a little bit of eyeliner on the top. This is the Schwing liner from The Balm. I'm pretty sure I got this from like Target or David Jones or something. Uh, I'm going to give it a little shake and I basically just want to do quite a thin line with a small wing just to make sure that my lashes can blend in really, really nicely. So I kind of look down and almost stamp it along my eyelid. Going to apply a little bit of mascara now. This one's just the CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume 1. Just before I apply any false lashes, I'm going to use a little bit of a setting spray. How satisfying is that? Okay, so this is the Vanity Collagen Beauty Mist. Um, I love this stuff. It smells really, really good. I think. <laughs> My other one smells like lemon and I was making sure this one smelled the same, but I don't know if it does. Okay, I can't smell anything. All right, so I'm gonna close my eyes, give my face a little spray, trying to avoid my hair. It's taken me a long time to find some really affordable lashes that I love, and I've come across these on AliExpress, been buying them for ages, and I absolutely love them. So these are the G603, so I'm pretty sure you can just type that into AliExpress and it will bring them up. Um, I do prefer the G604 ones, uh, but I've only got these ones left, so I'm going to be applying these ones today. Alright, so while I'm waiting for the lash glue to dry, I'm going to go in with a little bit of eyeliner just on the outer corner of my eye underneath. I'm just going to go ahead and apply the lashes now. So I kind of took my head back, look down into my mirror, and I'm just going to sit that on as close as I can to the lash line. And then I stick down the outer corner, so you obviously want to make sure that your glue is at the really tacky stage as well. Um, I use the Duo glue, like Duo or Ardell. I'm pretty sure they're pretty much the same thing. And then just stick down that inner corner. Once I've done that, I kind of look down and press the tweezers just along just to make sure they're sitting in the right spot. Okay, so lashes are on, glue is dry. I'm just going to go in and do a little bit of mascara on the bottom lashes. Right, so just gonna go in and do my inner corner. This product isn't made anymore, sorry, um, but just use any like bright kind of highlighty color. Okay, so time for the lips now. I'm gonna go in with the cork lip liner from MAC and I'm just gonna do the very outline of my lips using this one. That's pretty much like four products that I normally use from MAC. It's either the cork liner, the strip down liner, Yash lipstick, or peach stock. So today I'm gonna to use peach stock. I'm just gonna apply this to the center of my lips. So I'm not going over the cork liner. I'm literally putting it just inside that line. So now I'm just gonna go in with a little brush and I kind of just blend the lipstick into the lip liner. So I want to look like a little bit glossy. I'm going to go in with my Fenty Beauty Diamond Bomb Gloss. So because this one is a clear one, I don't want to apply it directly to my lips because it will end up coloring the gloss inside the tube. Just going to apply a little bit to my hand. Now I'm just going to use that same brush and apply some of that Fenty Beauty Gloss Bomb. I really hate sticky glosses. This one is so smooth, but it stays on really, really well. And it smells insane. And I just put it on my chin. At the end, I like to just go through my brows. So this is just the Benefit Give Me Brow little gel spoolie thing. I'm just going to go through and use this. I'm pretty sure it's in just like the shade Blonde or Taupe. And just give the brows a little brush just to make sure there's no like powder sitting in them. Okay, so this is the finished look. It's pretty much been my everyday makeup routine doing pretty much exactly what I've done in today's video for the longest time. And it's nice to update you and let you know what I've been doing. These lashes are insane. 
and they're so cheap. I'm pretty sure I spend like two dollars something for like a pack of five. Mason's at his dad's for the next couple of days, so if anyone has any video suggestions, now's the time to comment them down below because I do have plenty of time and I'm planning on sitting here and filming as much as I can over the next couple of days. It's been fun filming again. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'll see you guys in my next video.